Hi, I'm Peter Kissler uh, from Heart Rhythm TV, and it's my great pleasure to share the uh, stage with uh, Dr. Rod Tong, who's um, head of uh, cardiology at the uh, um, University of Arizona. Um, Rod, I thought we'd just grab you. I know you're really busy in this meeting. And firstly, I want to thank you for all everything you've done for the Heart Rhythm Society, um, both in getting Heart Rhythm TV out there um, on a political front. So really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. It's a, it's a privilege and it's our profession. Yeah. So um, we're going to jump right in. And for all the fellows, VPs out there who perhaps aren't as experienced as yourself with VT, I want us to give you your top five tips for VT ablation. Tips and tricks. Well, one of the biggest controversies right now is, do we even need a map VT? You know, you can really just take this all the way down to saying, let me just burn all the scar out. And that would be extreme homogenization. Don't even look. Um, but we still believe that it's relevant to take a look at it because sometimes that can clue you in on which corner of the scar to work on. Maybe sometimes you're in the wrong ventricle and maybe it's an idiopathic VT. It's an outflow track. So tip number one is to see the VT of interest still. And we still try to induce. Okay. Um, I would say tip number two, another controversy is when do we go epicardial? When do we go endocardial? The CO2 insufflation is a new trend by Silverbauer that's really been able to make it a little easier, increase the space. So we have seen with VT maps on both surfaces that it tends to be on both surfaces. This is a three-dimensional animal. And now does that mean we have to go epicardial for everything? It's not clear. We've seen the needle. There's probably has some effect. Will PFA go transmural? Probably not but it's exciting to do so. Um, and then the other one is to spend as little time in VT as you possibly can. Right. But we think that you can have anticipatory mapping strategies, which we call stamp mapping, strategic position of multi-electrodes. Okay. So you get an area that we think is like a deceleration zone or wavefront discontinuity. You're looking for a pebble in a stream during sinus rhythm. This is a great nidus for reentry. Okay. And then put as many electrodes, build an endocardial sock in that space and even with three beats, you can see if it's diastolic. Okay. And then the question is, how much do we need to burn? Another controversy. And I think there, we're going to do a randomized trial looking at less than 25 minutes of RF versus extensive homogenization and saying, is that additional? Because we know more is better because it's probabilistic. But if we know physiologically where it is, maybe we don't need to rely on probabilities. Okay. And what about endpoint? Endpoints is obviously non inducibility is what we like to see. Right. But maybe remapping with high density mapping and showing that the physiology of the scar has changed, you've homogenized the actual wavefront where it looks more continuous rather than discontinuous. Right. So more to come on that. Okay. And just a quick one on your workflow. Is it all general anesthesia? It is. We typically use general anesthesia because we like that stability. There's questions if that actually impairs inducibility, mm. and we don't think it actually does. Mm -hmm. um, we will induce before general anesthesia, and often we'll find ourselves not inducible, and we say, ha, can't blame general anesthesia for that right. one. So we do like the stability of general anesthesia. Okay. And endo-epi combined up front, how do you work that? We typically will go epi up front first, and then okay. we'll get access, play around in the epicardial space, map, do everything, and you're not even out of heparin for a long time. Let any little bleeding heal up if there is bleeding. And then we go endo. Okay. And does it matter what substrate you're dealing with in terms of that? As well, that's where MRI is so useful okay. to be able to say this is periaortic anoreceptal type. The yield of epicardial is so low, and that's been a new advance for us too. We used to go epi for everyone non-ischemic, and it okay. just depends. Do they have the epicardial substrate on MRI, or is this the anoreceptal subtype? Okay. So hopefully those tips and tricks will do many people good. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time, Rod. Thank you, Peter.